Hello everyone, Pallytub here, and welcome back to the A through Z playthrough. Hope you guys are doing well today. In today's video, we have landed upon Li Ming. Li Ming, as of right now, using the last three patches to help get these statistics, because there was just a patch that totally changed Rhaegar and reset the slate on everybody's stats. Uh, Li Ming has a 46.28% win rate, one of the lowest in the game. But despite that, Li Ming also has a popularity of 35%, 22.8 of that being pick rate, 12.27 of that being ban rate. If we take a look at Li Ming's actual win rate, one, two, three, four, five, six, she is the seventh lowest in the game. If we take a look at her popularity, she's the second most played mage in the game. Eh, maybe third. Azradan and Nazebo are above her, if you want to count those as mages. I guess you probably should. So the third most played mage in the game. She's always had a phenomenal, flashy skill set. If you're able to get kills, then her trait, Critical Mass, allows her to reset all of her cooldowns, even her heroic ability, and then continue to lob them out at her team. Over the course of the last couple of years, it seems as though Arcane Orb has become the most popular way of playing Li Ming, something that I wasn't familiar with at all. It was always kind of memed on back in my day. That is, after one of the biggest changes to Li Ming, she was so stupid when she was added into the game. She had a talent called S of Johan. If you hit someone with your Arcane Orb, S of Johan would kind of suck any player that took damage into the center of where that skill shot landed. That doesn't sound that bad. A little bit of displacement. I mean, you were only moving a couple pixels, but when you could get resets and you just do massive amounts of AOE damage, you could keep sucking people into the center and just completely clobber enemy teams like crazy. If you ever want to look up some clips, S of Johan is a keyword that you should look for. Uh, Lee B could just wipe out an entire team. It was actually disgusting. That was removed relatively soon after she was added in. And I got to be honest, I don't, I don't like playing Lee Ming. She doesn't have lane clear. I mean, she kind of does, but you got to do a very specific thing. I think the, the most irritating part about Li Ming is that she's all skill shots, and there are so many small little things that can interrupt your skill shot. For instance, if you're an Asmodan and you throw out the dunk, the dunk goes over everything and lands where you want it. But Li Ming has almost the same size ability with Arcane Orb, but as Arcane Orb travels, if it hits literally anything, it's going to be destroyed. So you have to position in like a totally different way Way that I've just never been that into. Fair warning, since the patch, Matchmaker has been terrible for me. It took me almost 10 minutes to get games on Lili. I believe I was sitting in eight minute queues while they were trying to figure that out. And then today I've had nothing but levers. And uh, well, let's just say uh, the skill discrepancy in these matches has been questionable as the quick match parameters expand and try to just find anyone to put a game together. That being said, hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. We'll be back soon with a look at the Lost Vikings. But I guess I'm supposed to say that at the, the end of the video and not now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves in the Infernal Shrines today. The friendly team, Stitches, Rhaegar, Muradin, <laughs> Orphea, and Lee Ming. I've literally played six matches in a row. Most of them had levers and AFKers, but they've all just been assassin clusters. Just five damage dealers versus five damage dealers. It's been so hard. Actually, it looks like we have some real team comps here. This might be fun. Uh, at level one, we are going to go for the talent that gives us more damage if we pick up region globes. Uh, the reason for that, of course, the objective on this map is surrounded by region globes on almost all sides. So getting one of those should not be that hard to do. Or Orphea does get taken down as the game is getting underway, but I'm doing my best to kite back and stay safe. The enemy team Sergeant Hammer also becomes a really big target for us to send our gigantic arcane orbs at. So this this build might go okay so power hungry what it does is when we pick up a regen globe we get 20 percent increased spell damage for is it 20 maybe 20 is too much uh 10 spell damage for 20 seconds i knew there was a 20 in there somewhere uh with that extra damage hopefully we can not only 
beat up this enemy team as much as possible. Holy crap. Oof. That was pretty good. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Uh, you got me good there. Hopefully we could beat them up, but that increased spell power damage also means that my siege potential goes up as well. Today we're going to be playing an arcane orb build. This is a setup that a few years ago when I played this game a ton, everyone used to meme on, but now it's by far the most popular way of playing Li Ming. I'm really not sure what changed, what happened, but I'm just along for the ride. Trying to help our Rhaegar clear out this camp, a man after my own heart. I love to see that. Uh, then we're going to rotate back to middle and try to help out. So our Q ability, we have Magic Missile. This sends out a few different projectiles that all converge on a location that we choose. The enemy team's junk rat is going to be taken down, and then we can hit... Oh, imagine... Imagine if we had <laughs> some sustained damage. Our team comp's a little weird because ideally you don't want to draft two mages because the damage comes in waves, right? But Orphea has pretty low cooldowns and if we're getting kills, mine will reset. It's just that actually getting these guys low on health may be difficult. Kind of depends on what our tanks build. Burden and Stitches are capable of quite a lot of damage in the right scenarios, but we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, magic missile on my Q. I pick the point where they all converge. I think Li Ming has the hardest skill shots in the game. I think that's one of the reasons that uh, her win rates are so low. It's just so hard to get used to. So, like, you can theoretically completely miss a target that's standing right in front of you if you don't put your crosshair on the, or your cursor on the correct spot. I've been playing too much Battlefield. Everything is crosshair. Our W ability is the Arcane Orb. This is a sphere that we launch out at our adversaries. As it travels, it gets more and more powerful. And then, um... Oh, I need to pay attention. Junkrat taken down. This reset all of our cooldowns with our trait. That's perfect. I guess I'm just going to keep eating these mines that he's leaving down anywhere, everywhere. When I was doing our Junkrat video, you guys were saying just how strong tra trap build Junkrat is. And I'm starting to see why. The Arcane Orb is lobbed in, sending in another one, hitting the enemy team Sergeant Hammer with it. But like I said, uh, Orphea taken down. Look at what's happening. Kind of all of our damage gets shut down along with it because I have five, six, seven seconds in between spell casts, depending on which spell that I'm using. Let me go down here, get this region globe, focus Sergeant Hammer on the back. That was big damage there. If I can do it again, we might be able to secure the kill. There it is. Now the damage going out on Diablo as my cooldowns reset. Arcane Orb explodes on the first enemy health bar that it comes into contact with, meaning that if the enemy team is capable of summoning in a lot of things like an Anubarak or a Zagara, that can absolutely destroy any momentum you might have in actually dealing damage to an enemy. Uh, the same thing can be said about this fucking objective. Getting orbs past anything that's going on here can be so hard to do. And unfortunately, the enemy team is going to grab the first objective. Good contestion by our team, though. At level 7, we're going to go for Zai's Vengeance. Increase Arcane Orb's damage uh, by distance traveled by 30%. This is also going to reduce the cooldown a little bit as well. So when we do these super-duper long-range orbs towards our enemies, the further they travel, that damage increase is just getting better and better. Diablo trying to hold this corner to the best of his ability. I'm trying to make sure I don't give him too many angles to actually stun me against the wall while I'm doing that. Looks like our friendly team has managed to push them away. The enemy team is already soaking XP up top, so I'm just going to ping our XP and hope that we get a little motivated to start doing it. Um... Jeez, our E ability is the teleport. This just allows us to reposition a little bit. There are builds for Li Ming. I actually enjoy those builds a lot that focus on making the teleport better and then allowing you to not only deal damage with it, but like get resets, get shields, and just be super active with non-stop teleportation. Really, oh, what hit me? Oh, another auto attack. Yeah, that'll do it. Really, really good stuff. However, I, it just totally fell out of favor. Back in my day, the Q build for Li Ming was by far the most popular one. And um, not seeing really any representation of that at all, aside from Mirror Ball level 16. I feel like I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm nervous about this game. 
So let's focus on it. Our trait, like I said, all it does, getting takedowns refreshes the cooldown of our abilities. And then coupled with that, our power hungry. Whenever we pick up a region globe, we get a little bit of a damage boost. The enemy team is hitting level 10 before us. Um, let's see if I can push in here. The best way to clear a lane on Li Ming, by the way, that is definitely the part of the game she struggles at the most, but the best way to clear lanes with her is to simply come at the lane from an angle, coming at it from the side, so that basically you're attacking the mage on either its left or right side. You don't want to throw orbs into the warriors. You need to flank around the warriors in order to get your orbs to actually deal meaningful damage. But if you could do it, I mean, you can clear stuff out really, really well. I would actually say she's way better at sieging, like just walking up to a building and punishing it for existing than she is at clearing lanes, which is kind of unique, actually. It is kind of a quirk. At level 10, I usually go for Wave of Force, increases our burst damage. I think I'm going to do that again. However, we do need to be mindful that our other source of damage, as well as everyone else on our team other than Rhaegar, is super duper skill shot oriented. And we don't want to mess that up too much if we can handle it. Um, I'm just going to try to continue to send orbs at these guys whenever possible. You'll notice that my mana is like pretty good, actually. Our man is staying really high, even though I've been spamming out abilities pretty much non-stop. We do tickle Diablo with that as he's running away. Let's aim for this bush now, see if we can hit anything very close to the enemy team's junk rat. So as we're doing this objective, I can do two things. I think last time I was a little too, too in on the objective. I can skirt around the outside and try to just dome these little minions as they spawn, or I could try to do that exact same strategy to the enemy heroes. I'm gonna start with that teleporting out of Diablo's abilities yet again. I don't know what blocked my skills that time, but something did. And unfortunately, we lost Orphea yet again. Our Muradin is trying to do some disruption back there. I'm going to go ahead and use my wave of force on these guys just to try to get him some space so he can reposition. Arcane Orb coming off cooldown, looking at the enemy team's Tyrande with it. Unfortunately, that doesn't land like I want. We do hit Lunara pretty hard. But again, I don't really think we have any damage to go in and actually secure this objective. When you consider that Sergeant Hammer's kind of effectively playing the same way as me, what is Sergeant Hammer doing? Trying to get out of everyone's line of sight, trying to be safe back in the corner so they can so that they can siege everything. The only difference is <laughs> that the team is supporting that really, really well, while I can't seem to disrupt him in any way. I'm gonna try to bait this over the wall. Perfectly done. We have 90 seconds on our sippy cup before it comes back. This guy really was beating the crap out of me there. Make sure we don't stand in the arcane too much. And I mean, our damage bursting this down really isn't that bad at all. We got through it pretty quick. The enemy team's already back to soaking. We are a level down, a talent tier down as well. There's a really, really big wave down in the bottom lane. I'm gonna go try to intercept that. Unfortunately, we did hit those warriors in the front, so not the most impressive arcane orb that I could have thrown out there. But what are you gonna do? I was nervous about this video because I've always been kind of bad at leaming. Uh, I've never really like made much improvements. I have been trying to make an effort to just be on the computer less since Holly's dad passed away. I wanna be there for her and her family whenever I can, uh, but I have, along with this series, been practicing characters a lot. Since kind of all that's happened, I put like a three or four game limit on just getting everything perfect. So I don't just sit here for a week and play nothing but Lee Ming. All of my practice games have been horrible. All of them, every single one, just really, really bad. I was hoping for something else here, but the A through Z isn't about winning. It's about hitting the record button, talking about the history of the character and hopefully having a good time. Now level 13, we could go for Glass Cannon. Increases my spell power by 20%. That means these orbs that they're lobbing could hit really, really hard, especially when we couple that with Power Hungry. However, we are going to be losing 15% of our maximum health, meaning we don't even have 2,000 at level 13. That's very, very squishy. The enemy team six kills ahead. I am our top damage by a lot. A little concerned. How many deaths does Orphea have? Five! Oh, 
Oh, oh, okay. All right. Let's get our region globe here. I want to show you the siege potential just a little bit if I can, but I am kind of afraid to move up as well. Uh, once we hit level 16, it will become even easier. But look at that, a thousand damage on an eight second cooldown. If the enemy team doesn't rotate to stop me, this thing's gonna be dead in just a few seconds. There's another thousand damage. Magic missile hitting it for several hundred as well. Ooh, the enemy team Sergeant Hammer though, with that graduating range is commanding a lot of space over there. Targeting Li Ming with these skills. They do hit, trying to knock Diablo back into our team a little bit. Stitch is doing an even better job and we take them both out. Really nicely done. And this should be a good example of where you should aim your skill. Boom, hitting several of the squishy backline enemies instead of the warriors up front. Now, unfortunately, my ability to take camps seems to be non-existent from what I can tell. So the fact that Orphea and Rhaegar are up there doing that, they absolutely have my blessing. You guys know I'd like to be right there if I could, right there in the action. If I could, that being said, like, this shouldn't be that bad. If we just lob a big old orb at these guys. Um, I am a little scared that our team rotated away from the objective instead of coming to it, but you know, whatever, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like I actually was able to take that over relatively easy. Hey, never doubt yourself, team. You never know. You never know. Sergeant Hammer is being zoned back by Muradin. This is actually really, really good. Rhaegar probably has our best AoE clear, so if he can get on this, I think that's going to be a great place to start. We do hit the enemy team's Lunara incredibly hard with part of our combo. But unfortunately, I could not finish her off. And now we're kind of getting back into that same position where I have a ton of minions in between me and the guys I'm actually trying to hit. Uh, Lunara is going to take a lot of damage as she jumps onto our team. Was she able to get out? No, it looks like she was taken down. Using my teleport just to try to reposition away from any potential Diablo combos. Ugh, ugh, shit, boys. Shit, boys. I mean, that's a big hit, and then I can do it again. The issue is that they can clear this out pretty quickly too. Uh, I could potentially throw my ult in there. The enemy team's Junkrat's doing a great job of zoning me out of this though. Look at all these traps. He's literally preventing me from entering this area. Uh, doing a very good job at that. Oh, we got him low though. Oh, can't hit him. Diablo getting in the way of our spells. And even though I tried, we cannot secure the objective i have more damage than my entire team put together i think that's kind of scary that's kind of scary this is how all of my matches have been today though every single one since the new update i feel like matchmaking can't figure out what to do with me my lily games were terrible too and i had to wait super duper long for the games to even start for quick match to find a game it was eight minutes all right, well, we don't lead it over the wall, but that's totally fine because we're killing it pretty quickly. Uh, this game's not over by any means. I'm just, you know, frustrated. <laughs> just being honest. Uh, we need to refresh our orb talent here. Let's hit this wave real hard. Man, that is satisfying, just being able to totally clobber a wave down. Uh, we might be able to displace him backwards and save ourselves, and that's exactly what we did. Sergeant Hammer starting to siege. Let's nail him, nail him, nail him, nail him. Oh, God, can anyone else help me with anything, please? Sergeant Hammer has to be low. There's the kill. Focusing up my orb towards Diablo now. Unfortunately, he did outrun it. We see Taronda trying to run. We're going to hit her with some displacement. Hopefully keep her in here. She is taken down now. Focusing on Diablo as best as I can. Wave of force to keep him in range. There's the magic missile, but it does not connect. Oh, Jesus. That's a lot of damage, Lunara. Where did you even come from? Where did you even come from? 63,000 damage this game. Feeling pretty good about that. We do see the enemy team pushing in with some mercenary camps here, or I guess mercenary camps for the enemy team pushing in. The enemy team was still pretty far back. We do lose our Muradin, splitting our deaths a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, we're almost a level behind this team. They are going to hit 20 pretty soon. We need to make sure that we are soaking as much XP as possible to, tr to try to try to stay in this game. That was hard, enunciation. Uh, as we look down towards the bottom lane, I don't even think I stop there. I think I immediately go middle and keep clearing. I'll be damned if I end up being number one on every stat, I'm gonna be upset. 
I haven't even been soaking that well. Uh, I'm going to ping that a lot that the enemy team just hit level 20. They're probably looking for a fight. So the more my team actively avoids them, the better off we are going to be. I'm actually going to stay up here for one more wave. Try to hit that mage. I think I might actually be a little too far away. I don't know. There's like a sweet spot with it where you can actually damage everything. I don't seem to really be getting that this game, though. Uh, we are taking a mercenary camp up at the top right position. Every single person on the enemy team is missing, which probably means they're getting that camp as well on their side. Lunara trying to scout out the middle lane a little bit, but that's enough for us to hit level 20. And I'm going to go for Talrasha's Elements, Cycle Abilities to Gain Damage. All this means is we need to uh, cast each spell, not really in a sequence, but make sure we don't cast something twice in a row in order to gain yet another massive spell power increase. Uh, the team is kind of looking for a fight. They may have found it up in the top lane. Unfortunately, I'm not there because the objective is about to start. So um, I don't know what they're fighting over. Oh, but the fight's not going well, that's for sure. Lunara kind of poking at the door. I also just noticed we have a bloodlust without any auto attackers on our team. That's a good sign. That's a really good sign. If you're using uh, the same level 20 as me, you'll just notice a symbol over a lot of abilities. That symbol is letting you know which spell you are able to cast to keep your bonus going. Uh, Diablo with a big apocalypse. Lunara jumping on the back line here. Let's see if we can nail her. Yes, we can. Now, please, please nothing be in the way. I have to kill this tank. We did enough damage to force it back. Where's our fucking healer? Ugh. Lunara still has a little bit of vision, even though her team was pushed out. We don't want to give them even that much. Uh, we do see Sergeant Hammer on the top of this area, still beating the living crap out of my team. One more orb and I got her though. There it is. Now Diablo. Ugh. Oh my god, my wave of force was literally like two damage short from finishing off Tyrande there. Uh, oh, and that was a big pickup for them. We just need two more, Rhaegar. Put your lightning shield on and stand still. <laughs> oh god. Oh god. Oh god. We got it. Oh, we got it. I'm completely out of mana. That was the most mana I've used this entire game. Middle lane's being pushed in like crazy. I'm still the only one standing. <laughs> We lost a building during the objective. I guess I could have wave of force that shit. It is only a 30 second cooldown. And remember, we are getting those cooldowns reset as well. So um, just casting, just casting it to clear a lane when I know nothing else is happening is really a bad thing. I disagree with how that arcane orb landed. I want you to know that minion. I'm pretty upset about that. I feel like that was a, that was a good one. It should have hit a few enemies there, you know? This clear is better than I thought it would be. I must admit. Uh, the enemy team has scouted us out from their side, not only with an owl, but with a wisp as well. They are likely getting that same mercenary camp just right over there. We are the highest XP contribution for our team, the highest damage on our team, and we also have the most siege damage on our team, on a character that I barely know how to play. Uh, we do see, or, uh, Lunara jumping in on me as I try to make my way back down here. Rhaegar just now respawning, so I don't know how good of an idea this actually is. Nice apocalypse. Here's the wave of force trying to keep Junkrat in range. Not able to do it, and the poison from Lunara is able to take me down. Murden having a hard time moving up to the enemy team here. Stitches trying desperately to run away, but you can't run away from Lunara. Well, maybe you can with a bloodlust. Did they change bloodlust? <laughs> Grant nearby allied heroes 40% attack speed and movement speed that causes them to heal 30% of the basic attack damage to primary targets. All right. All right, good. All right, great. Looks like Sitches is able to make it back to our structure. The enemy team pushing with two mercenary camps, one in the middle, one in the bottom of the map. And that camp we took before just now coming back up right now. 
all things considered, this game has felt really crappy the entire time, but we're really not that far behind. This is the biggest threat to our well-being right now, and with 15 seconds before myself and Muradin are back up, and another 17 for Orphea, this may be where the catapults start pushing in. Diablo is taking a ton of damage from the tower for no real reason, though. I have to make sure that I can attack around this minion wave, but it actually looks like everyone's leaving. The respawns were enough to scare them away. That's that's kind of cool. I don't, I don't hate that. If we could cycle to the middle lane, there is still that Merc Camp kind of pushing up. My Arcane Orb hits one minion and totally ruins the skill shot. <sighs> I can't wait to put Li Ming back on the shelf <laughs> and, and never, and never play her again. The enemy team is scouting us out with the Wisp. We do have Wave of Force, so like if we need to hold this, we, we certainly can. I actually have to cast my ult again to keep my sequence going. What if I just break the sequence? Let's just break it. Let's just break it. Get ready for the next team fight. Speaking of which, next objective is going to be at the bottom lane. I just got a region globe there. I want to get one more. Perfect. Ooh, an owl coming from beneath me. So we know Taronda's down there somewhere. I also just got a quick look at Junkrat, who's already laying down traps in the area. I feel like moving in and contesting this area early on would be really good for our team because the enemy requires so much setup to really get going. Uh, we are trying to stay near our healer for some extra healing, but... Ugh. Well, chain heal did bounce. Chain heal did bounce. There is that. Um, where's the enemy hammer? I'm not. Oh, there. Oh, junk rat trap fucking caught me. I didn't see it at all. And right inside of the sergeant hammer range, we are taken down. This is looking like a three v five now. They do get a nice slow totem on Lunara, but I don't think too much else is going to happen slowly being picked off one by one i mean when you consider we can't win a 5v5 you have to wonder how much of a chance they have in a 3v5 <laughs> the frozen punisher is pushing towards our weakest building in the bottom lane right now with the entirety of the enemy team backing it up as well diablo's still relatively low on hp here but i think toronto is going to be able to take care of that no problem so it just does bait the leap forward, but Diablo follows it up, almost completely locking him in place. Citrus so doesn't have his ultimate for three more seconds, so he wasn't able to leave that uh, green bile carpet down behind him. Bird and soaking up some punishment. We are respawning right now. <laughs> Go. Run, Bird, and be free. Be free, Bird. <laughs> They'll never find you over there. There's no way. <laughs> yeah, boys. This is what every single game today has been like. I don't know why I expected this one to be any different. Thirty-five percent of the team's hero damage is what we did. When you consider there's five people on our team, thirty-five percent is quite a lot. We ended up with 96,000 siege damage, 84,000 hero damage, and 16,000 XP contribution. Uh, Power Hungry at level one into Triumvirate, Zai's Vengeance, Wave of Force, Glass Cannon, Arcane Orbit, and Talrasha's Elements. This is the most popular build aside from maybe swapping and disintegrate at level 10 for more sustained damage. Problem is you're usually just sitting still for quite a while. And I did not want to do that with a Junkrat, a Diablo, a Lunara, a Tyrande, and a Sergeant Hammer. All of those things are targets I do not want to sit still in front of. So that's why we went for the wave of force. Up next, we have the Lost Vikings. I'm sure that'll be fine.